Good afternoon, I'm Malcolm Jordan and this is your Midday News Fix for Tuesday the 23rd of April. A government inquiry has found New Zealand's emergency management system isn't fit for purpose and the country isn't ready to respond to large-scale emergencies. The inquiry, chaired by former Governor-General Sir Jerry Mataparai, also found the system's completely failed in places and doesn't allow people to prepare and respond to disasters around them. Joey Dwyer reports. It found during Cyclone Gabrielle some residents didn't receive a civil defence warning to evacuate until it was far too late. That included cases in Esk Valley and Parkofai in Hawke's Bay where residents received a mobile alert while on the roof or huddled in their ceiling. MPs have been warned the government's plans to ban gang patches is a legal overreach and bad lawmaking. The Justice Ministers introduced a bill which would ban people wearing patches in public places by the end of the year. The Justice Select Committee is hearing submissions on the proposed law this morning. Free Speech Union Executive Chief Executive Jonathan Ayling opposes the bill. Legislation like this will disproportionately affect Māori. It will disproportionately silence Māori in our communities. Questions over the future role of the Waitangi Tribunal from the Prime Minister. A decision could come tomorrow in the judicial review into a Waitangi Tribunal summons issued to Children's Minister Karen Chaw. Act leader David Seymour has suggested the tribunal should be wound down. Christopher Luxon says Seymour's comments were ill-considered, but he told Mike Hosking it's time to consider the future of the tribunal. But there's a legitimate question to say what should be the role and focus of the Waitangi Tribunal. We're going to look at that piece of of work uh, as a government. We'll do that in a proper and a considered way. The police association's concerned that job cuts in online harm, money laundering and terrorism roles at customs and internal affairs may see police required to pick up the work which they don't have resources for. President Chris Carhill says job cuts shouldn't be affecting frontline services or resources. Many people that don't work on the frontline actually are enabling those that do to do their job. The Resident Doctors Association says its members have decided to strike next month only as a last resort. National Secretary Deborah Powell says collective bargaining with Health New Zealand has reached an impasse. When you get 95% of your members voting in favour of strike action, that's a very clear message to the employer that they need to change their position. Tapapa's taken down its vandalised Treaty of Waitangi panel. The panel displaying the English version of the treaty, which was defaced in December by protesters using an angle grinder and spray paint, has been replaced with a video projection describing differences between the Māori and English versions. A homicide investigation has been launched after the death of a man in the South Taranaki town of Hawara overnight. To sport, the engines are revving for supercars to add a second New Zealand round alongside a Topo to the racing calendar. More than 67,000 people attended the Topo 400 across three days in what was the first supercars event on this side of the Tasman since 2022. Crusaders CEO Colin Mansbridge has acknowledged the side's issues at first five as they enter last chance saloon territory in Super Rugby. And Inter Milan have sealed a 20th title in Italian football's Serie A with victory over arch-rivals AC Milan. I'm Malcolm Jordan, that's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.